Hi! In this video, we will see what functions are and how to create and use them in Power Query. But instead of going the usual tour of explaining everything through tables, variables and other Power Query structures, I decided to explain this topic in simpler terms, to get you to understand what functions are in general and to give you a feeling of where you will need them and why are they so useful. To bring this topic closer to you, we will explain it with a hypothetical ice cream man who is starting its business and wishes to increase its productivity and optimize ice cream production. Ice cream man symbolizes each of us doing daily work with data. Now let's say the ice cream man wishes to create an ice cream from fresh strawberries. To accomplish that, he needs to follow a few steps. First, he needs to blend the fruit, then he needs to add sugar, then he needs to stir the bowl, then add binder mixture and put it into a freezer. And after all this is done, he receives a strawberry ice cream. After that, he takes another fruit, for example, mango, and he does all the same steps manually and proceeds to the next fruit. Now he realizes that doing this manually will take too much time, so he decides to create a machine that will automatically do the five necessary steps no matter which fruit we put into it. So he takes the first fruit, strawberry, and he writes on a piece of paper all the steps that need to be done to make ice cream from the raw strawberry. After he finishes writing the script, he transforms that script into a set of instructions for the machine to follow. Now any fruit that he feeds the machine with will get transformed into ice cream of the same flavor. Now if we consider fruit as tables and machines as a function, we can see that with this approach we can submit multiple different tables of a similar structure to the function and the function will transform them into a new structure. We can also see what can happen if we feed the function with the wrong type of data. In our case, these are potatoes, peppers and a rock. The function is unable to process those objects because they are not fruit upon which the function was created. Therefore, the function will return an error if we feed it with those objects. Now let's go through three steps needed to create and use a function. We'll use a pseudo Power Query code to demonstrate each step. The first step is to create the script from one source. In this step, we are doing all the necessary transformations that we want to apply for each table that we push to the function. Remember, fruit represents different kind of tables of a similar structure. Pseudo code to the right is a representation of what needs to be done with the fruit to transform it into an ice cream. We can see that each step is referencing the previous one and that the last step is also the exit step of the query. Now let's transform that query to a function. As we saw earlier, the function accepts objects which then enter the function and get transformed. We define those objects, which are called function arguments, with the following syntax. So we put the name of the object or variable that will enter the function inside of round brackets, followed by the equal and larger sign. In case we wish to feed our function with more arguments, we can add them inside of the round brackets and separate them with comma. The name of the argument that we feed the function with also needs to be the first step of the function. We can imagine this syntax as the argument is falling into the start of the function, so whatever we provide as the argument 
it will fall into the starting position of the function and will be transformed through the applied steps. And that is the third step of applying the function. So the function is always the same and is receiving objects called fruit that in this case come from the column called raw input. In the first row, the fruit argument becomes banana, which goes through all the applied steps and we receive a banana ice cream. In the second row, the same function receives cherry as an argument, goes through all the applied steps and we receive a cherry ice cream. Now in the third row, we try to feed the function with the rock argument. The function receives rock, tries to transform it to the ice cream, but of course fails in doing so and we receive an error instead of an ice cream with the rock flavor. And that is a good thing because I'm not sure it would taste that good. Now after failing to transform rock to the ice cream, it moves to the next row and successfully transforms watermelon to the ice cream with the same flavor. As we can see, functions are an excellent tool to automatize repetitive tasks over multiple similar tables or other Power Query objects like lists, records or simple variables. You should always use functions when you need to do the same periodical transformations on more than one data source. Functions also provide a more flexible way of handling script changes. Imagine that the ice cream man needs to change its recipe a bit. With the function in place, instead of taking each ice cream flavor and changing its script, which means doing the same work dozens of times, he only needs to change the function part and it will be applied to all the other fruits. Functions are created with the idea of simplifying and optimizing the authoring experience and act as a sugar syntax for more complicated transformations that happen inside of them. If we think about it, all the native M functions such as transpose, fill down, unpivot, etc. are also sugar syntax of the custom functions that Microsoft created for us. Now with the use of a custom function, we can provide even more sugar syntax to our scripts and transform several hundreds or even thousands of different sources with a single click. In the following video, we will see how to create and use functions on a real example.